Hello guys, this is Chris Tiger, and um, after this video, I will never, ever, ever address feminist frequency ever again. Because this is essentially going to be my big main problem with feminist frequency uh, for as long as they live, because they're never going to change, and they're always going to be like this. My problems with them before have only been getting more increasing lately. And honestly, after this video, I'm just never going to talk about them again because this isn't the type of channel that I want. What I want is just a fun channel that talks about video games. But recently, with how political video games have become lately, there's been just so much to talk about that I never really did talk about because uh, 11 months ago, I used to be a super really hardcore feminist. And then six months ago, and I stopped. I really did not like feminism. And then recently I've come back around um, with a lot more education and a lot more wisdom than I used to have. But with that said, this is not an angry rant aimed towards feminist frequency because I don't like them. Uh, I am a feminist myself and I'm doing this because of feminism because it is my principle as a feminist that uh, men and women should be treated equally and uh, that uh, injustices should be shown or at least that sexism and misogyny are uh, the way they're portrayed in media, if they are portrayed, is important. Um, and clearly, we think we all think the same. I think we all agree on the same principles. I just don't think they. It's all the method. It's execution. It's it's a lot of things. Principles can be the same, but if the fine print's not correct, uh, there's a lot to that. So yeah. This is the only time I'm ever going to address uh, feminist frequency because uh, this and this is not an attack against them. It's just so on and so forth. Also, I haven't played The Witcher 3. I haven't played The Witcher 3, so let me explain this real quick. I have The Witcher 2. I've played The Witcher 2. I haven't finished The Witcher 2 because it's fucking hard. But I have played The Witcher 3. And, um, yeah, I, just, I have this extensive knowledge because... I've watched a long walkthrough on it. I haven't finished that walkthrough either, but I'm over 60% through the main story, and I've seen quite a few side missions and so on and so forth. So uh, that's, where I guess, that's where this extensive game knowledge is coming from. But I am a huge fan of the Witcher series, but I'm not making this video because I'm a huge fan of the Witcher series. Uh, it doesn't matter what fan of a series I am, like... If I love something, that also means that it's that doesn't keep it from being able to be criticized. I just think w what this game's being criticized for is stupid and harmful to the game industry and to gamers and to feminists alike. All three groups should be harrowing against these opinions because these opinions are wrong and they're toxic and they're bad. And, um... Yeah, that's, that's why I'm doing these videos, because it's this is wrong by principle. So I'm going to read you all of her tweets, and then I'm going to give you one long rebuttal on it. So let me just read all of it. Well, I guess we can just use The Witcher 3 to illustrate the rest of our Tropes vs. Women series, because it includes all the sexist tropes. In The Witcher 3, you get to play a Siri for short segments, but be warned. Enemies will yell nasty, gendered insults at her while she fights. The Witcher 3 does the Siri what Arkham City did to Catwoman. Thugs yell bitch and whore and sexually harass both women as you play them. Also, it's realistic for enemies to sexually harass female characters, excuse, is nonsense in fantasy games filled with ghouls and ranks. Dear Game Industry, if you want to appeal to women, maybe consider not having your game yell bitch and whore at us while we're playing. Enemies in The Witcher 3 yell gendered insults at the playable female character, but insults thrown at the male lead are decidedly not gendered. Enemies called Geralt freaking mutant due to the fictional prejudice against magic, while they call Siri cunt, is rooted in real-life sexism. Fantasy fiction could be a great place to confront issues like sexism and racism. The work of Ursula Leguin, Leguin and Octavia Butler do it beautifully. However, there's a huge difference between fantasy that engages with social issues critically and fantasy that uses them for gritty texture. If fantasy fiction is serious about addressing oppression like sexism, then the narrative should be focused on the struggles around that issue. First of all, <clears throat> let's start with uh, the nasty gendered insults while she fights. Um, 
Yeah, it's true. They don't yell. The enemies in the game don't yell nasty gendered insults at Geralt. They yell nasty gendered insults at Siri. My question for Anita Sarkeesian is: So what? Why is that a bad thing? Why is it bad that they're yelling gendered insults at her? And what I mean by that is this. The game character is one of immense power. And also, it's a powerful mentally and physically. She is a very headstrong and stubborn character, much like Geralt. With a lot of complex layers and backstory behind her. And so, because of that, um, you know, uh, enemies who are sexist and misogynistic yell awful things at her while fighting her. Our people in real life are sexist and misogynistic. Why? And the enemies in this game are sexist and misogynistic, and that's obviously portrayed as negative. If it's being portrayed as negative... What is the negative impact on the audience to show sexist and misogynistic behavior being punished through a decapitation? Like, I don't understand how any of that is incorrect or bad. Um, like, I want to just oppose this the Catwoman argument, because I think you're wrong about Catwoman, but to an extreme lesser degree. Uh, with Catwoman... Uh, the enemies are yelling sexist and misogynistic things to her, but there's a specific point within The Witcher 3, which is that it's deci the entire world, a lot of the men in it, specifically, like, non-heroic, uh, enemy characters, like, thugs and just assholes in the game, are sexist and yell sexist shit, and, or even non-enemies can sometimes say some pretty sexist shit. Um, but you have the choice to say something back or do something back or, you know, fucking chop someone's head off. And Geralt, and, and the protagonists, the heroes, the noble characters of this world are shown as decidedly, obviously not sexist. Um, even in for an RPG with the, be able to, the decisions that are able to be had in the game. You can't really, there's no decisions that you can make that are sexist. Like, I know Polygon in his review brought up that you can be sympathetic to the Bloody Baron, but they fucked that criticism up because they said you can be uh, sympathetic towards uh, the Bloody Baron beating his wife, which is incorrect. You can be sympathetic to the Bloody Baron at that moment about losing your daughter, which is something that Geralt and the Bloody Baron hold in common. You cannot be sympathetic towards the Blade Baron beating his wife. That's not possible. You can either be neutral to it, kind of, or you can be vehemently, insultingly, insultingly against it. There's only two options in the game, really, when it comes to that. And that's really the option with anything anybody says that's sexist in the game is the most closest to not sexist that you can be is neutral. That's it. Um, and so when you're talking about, like, that, these gendered insults, and you're saying it as a negative thing, it's not, you're saying it, it's, your reasoning for it is, you believe that these gendered insults are added for flavoring, um, in gritty texture, and you know what, that's just a bad, uh, that's not correct, like, that's not factually correct. Uh, I've seen her say a lot of times, and this is specifically, I noticed this when she was talking about uh, prostitution and violence against women in her second uh, series. Not It was part of Tropes vs. Women, but it wasn't Women as Background Decoration. It was the other one where she was basically, you know, denouncing sex workers and saying some pretty terrible shit. But decidedly, she was also stating, uh, she was saying that these prostitutes were added as gritty texture, as flavoring. Now, I hadn't played the majority of the games that she had been talking about, so I didn't put it out of opinion about that, because I hadn't played GTA V. I hadn't played um, The Godfather. I haven't played almost the majority of what she had to talk about, 
And honestly, it's the same for the background and women as background decoration. I also haven't played most of the games on that uh, video series. But here's what I do know. Um, whenever you're adding sexist and misogynistic, uh, themes inside of your game, it is always going to be gritty. It is always going to be dark. Uh, so what that means is that using that as a complaint, like saying it's only for gritty texture, that can be true, but for the most part, it's not. And it decidedly most so isn't with this game. It holds a narrative purpose. Because you hear, like, you, you, you women are oppressed in this world. They are. Um, you come from the opinion that sexism and misogyny is, misogyny is real. And you come with the opinion that women are oppressed in this world. And I agree with both of those statements. The second, latter one, to uh, only to a certain degree, only to so much when it comes to the first world. But with that said, I can only think of it like this. Because the, either you're saying that both characters need gendered insults added towards them, which I, uh, that's not really a point to Geralt's character is his gender. It's a point with Siri. But it's not a point with Geralt, because essentially they're dealing with racism mostly in that character. That character just has a different perspective. But both are oppressed in this world, which, by the way, thanks for completely undermining the racist element to it. Like, I know as a black guy, maybe I should be offended by the fact they don't have any black characters, but I'm not. Because they make up for that completely by having elves and dwarves in the game where uh decidedly they, it's not it, they have race in the game they're not specifically black if that's what you mean but they deal with race in the game and their opinion towards it has shown they are clearly not racist i think mostly where that comes from is you know you you under you underpin that so that's that's doing a disservice but because that's a large point to Geralt's character is he's not free of injustice. He's not free of injustice or oppression at all. You just don't want to address it as oppression or injustice. Or you're forcibly making series suddenly she is more oppressed than Geralt. Which considering she is more powerful than him, it's just incorrect. She's not more oppressed. They're equally oppressed in separate ways. Um... I'd say Ciri's less oppressed only in the sense of she's powerful enough to do something about it. No one can technically hold her down or force her to not be able to do something. Uh, unlike Geralt, who is considered... It's, it's not considerably less powerful, but... You can prevent Geralt from doing a few things, because that motherfucker can get taken down quite quickly. He is not... He's quite literally one of the more fragile game characters I can think of who's so powerful and magical but with that said the gendered insults thing just doesn't it's not a sensical argument at all and then what you say is and i'm gonna quote i'm gonna quote you on this uh you say dear gaming industry if you want to appeal to women maybe consider not having your game yell bitch and whore at us while we're playing uh, you know, you had an argument up there, and then you lost it when you wrote that sentence. Because the game is clearly not calling you a bitch or a whore. It is calling the character a bitch and a whore. There is a significant difference. And you just skew and fuck that sentence all the way up. It's just, um, this is mind-boggling to me. Like, how you can even... This is mind-boggling that you can even confuse the two. The character... And you playing that. If a movie has a character, a evil, like, not good human being, call a noble character a bitch or a whore, does that suddenly mean he's calling you a bitch or a whore? Like, I don't watch 12 Years as a Slave and watch the slave masters in there, and when they call uh, black characters niggers, I don't hear them calling me a nigger. I hear them calling the other characters a nigger. 
Now that makes me upset because that's racist, because that's bad. And it's, it's, it's a considerably different situation because that shit's real. But there, there's also that, which is, you know, just because something's happening to a fictional character doesn't mean it's happening to you. You can get offended by that uh, if its portrayal is inaccurate of that uh, situation or so on and so forth. But overall, it's not calling you that. I don't, and I don't get it. Like to go back to my metaphor, when we're talking about like something like Twelve Years a Slave, when those characters use those insults that are clearly racist, I'm not offended by those insults because they are aimed directly at me. I am, in, I'm insulted because of its historical context, but that's okay because the, the movie itself is not portraying it as a positive thing. And the same goes for The Witcher 3. It's not portrayed in a positive manner. Uh, I know those are two crazy uh, properties to compare to each other, but it's just just as an example, because um, I can't have another example that's popping in my head that's handled these racist and sexist uh, themes just as well or more apparent, which is the biggest disservice that uh, Anita Sarkeesian does with this, is uh, The Witcher 3 confronts racist and sexism in a quite critical and mature manner and holds up a mirror to that of which you're supposed to basically reflect on and think of it on your own and then when you see this mirror instead of sitting and saying i'm so happy that someone's holding up a mirror to these sexist and misogynistic ideas you get angry and write a rant on twitter criticizing the game for showing sexism and misogyny. That's insane to me. Like, that's, that, that's, that's crazy. That's crazy talk. That it doesn't make any sense. I do not know what could possibly appease you at that point, because there's nothing. It doesn't make sense, your argument. And so, let me read another one, because there's so much to talk about, honestly. Uh... <laughs> Fantasy fiction be, can be a great place to confront issues like sexism and racism. The works of Ursula Le Guin and Octavia Butler do it beautifully. However, there's a huge difference between fantasy that engages with social issues critically and fantasy that uses them for gritty texture. I think I already addressed this one, actually. Um, so I'm going to have to repeat myself. The last sentence, though, I didn't address. Which is, uh, if fantasy fiction is serious about addressing oppressions like sexism, then a narrative should be focused on struggles around that issue. That is the biggest disservice and the worst tweet that is read. I'm so glad that I didn't respond to this head on and that I waited because that is the absolute worst tweet that she's made in terms of this uh, game so far. That is the biggest disservice. That is the biggest injustice. That is the most horrid thing she could possibly say about this series, honestly, is by having a game that does well, if you weren't a sex negative feminism, a sex negative feminist, if you, which you are, which is ironic because you support feminists like Zoe Quinn, Zoe Quinn and other feminists who are clearly sex positive on the opposite extreme, and somehow that shit came full circle and so forth. But fuck ever. Going back, um, you, if you weren't a sex negative feminist, if you were just, if you dropped that shit, you have a game that directly talks about sexism and directly shows misogyny and portrays it as a negative. Not every game needs to hold racism and sexism as their narrative to address it, especially in a 100-hour game. I, the amount that they put in it, period, is kind of absurd just how directly focused it is on the whole situation because you would expect that shit to get tiring but it isn't but they spend so much time so much time talking about it or showing it in its many different lights and its many different ugliness and you spit in the face of that by saying that it doesn't by saying that holding it as a theme is unacceptable. Games can't have racism and sexism as themes or motifs in their games 
if their narrative doesn't directly focus on it, because you know what, The Witcher 3, it's directed, it's narrative isn't directly focused on racism and sexism. That's correct. It's a theme and motif. But how is it having it as a theme and motif even remotely close to being a negative? Especially with how big that actually is. Like, that's, that's insane. It's insane. All of this shit's insane. It, it, it doesn't make sense. I don't get it. I don't, I can't for the life of me understand your position on how these could possibly be negative. You want games to confront these issues. But then when a game directly confronts these issues, you go back and you call it sexist. You actually criticize it for doing what you want. I do not understand how much more focused on racism and sexism it could be without just outright making it the narrative. And so, with that said, like, I'm just, oh, oh, uh, it's, um, I think I'm done. I think I'm done. I've, I think I've covered all that I have to say on what she has to say. I think, I think I'm, I'm truly done. I'm not, I try, I'm, I got a little angry there. I got a little carried away because this is a very passionate topic for me. And I wouldn't be doing this video if it wasn't a passionate topic for me. But I just, I, this is, it's so important to the game industry where it goes from this point. Because we're about, we are in our, still in our teenage years. Games are not the most respected medium yet. They're not the greatest art form yet, seeing the man. But they're going to be. And when they do, I can't change how everyone thinks, and I can't make other people have my opinion, but damn it, I just want it to be known that that's not the only path that people can take. I want that to be known. I don't want games to go in that path, because that path is one of extreme censorship where art disappears. You don't, there's not a lot of, there's not a gigantic amount of artistic cartoons that come to mind in America because of television censorship. And because, you, like, you, you see works, not even of art, but fucking works of entertainment just censored in the most bullshit manner, like Dragon Ball Z, for example, having, where planes are shot. And then you'll have those characters say, well, no, don't worry, the parachutes are there. It's all okay. I don't want that to become video games. Because the ERSB is bullshit, and I know it's bullshit. I've said on several occasions it's bullshit. It's obviously bullshit. You can see that shit from a mile fucking away, which is why Hatred got a fucking AO rating, while GTA V and the original fucking Postal and Manhunt 1 can get away with a rated M uh, rating towards them. Like, that, like literally that type of bullshit. Uh, like, I don't, I, I see that, I see where everyone's going, I see kind of where the game industry is going, or at least if it follows what media is doing. A lot of big AAA studios have been listening to what important figures like Anita Sarkeesian and so on have to say. And you know what? I don't, I don't have any hatred in my heart or any negative feelings really toward Anita Sarkeesian. I have negative feelings for quite a few of her opinions, though. And it's because of these opinions that are just so harmful and just so bad that it's just... I can't. I can't. I just... I don't want that to be the world that we live in where art like this is... Like, it's so not only just downplayed, but outright critiqued for doing what you asked it to do. I can't see that making something that's not a schizophrenic, I'm bipolar ideology within game development and game design and game writing. It, it, it's bad writing, what you're recommending with fantasy writing. It, it's bad. 
but it's bad with a hint of principles and moral outcry added to it. That makes it so much worse. Because what if people were to write like you are asking them to? Very, I can imagine very few could excel at that. It would be negative. It would be bad. And so this is where I'm at. Because for a game to have transgender people, honestly, and to portray men and women, or at least to insinuate heavily, especially through its protagonists, a sense of equality um, in it is just... <sighs> so, it's, it's insane to me. But I've been doing a long rant about this for a long time, a long unscripted rant, which is where you've been getting a lot of ums and ahs. And, uh, I just did it again. I'm not, I, I think I'm finished here. You guys can put your comments in the comment section below. I'd love to hear your opinions. I'd love to hear some opinions by some other feminists, because I think that's highly important right now. Um, and yeah, just, I'd love to hear what you guys think. Uh, like, favorite, subscribe, share this on Facebook and Twitter, and tell me what you guys think. Uh, yeah. Mm.